Tickabilla! Hey, Lorna, I've got something to show you. Ooh, what's that, Justin? Ta da! Look at my new shoes! Well, there's nothing there! Ah, that's because these are no ordinary shoes. Yep, you see, when I put them on, I can make them walk however I want to. Yep, so watch this. <clears throat> I would like fast shoes. Oh, quick, stop them! Whoa, whoa. They're going around too fast! <laughs> <laughs> Those are great shoes! I tell you what, why don't we have our own special shoes? Get your shoes on. Ah, there we go. And the other shoe. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> uh, well, how shall we move? Oh, I would like some jump! On the spot shoes. Oh, ooh, ooh. oh. Hey. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> these are great, Justin. See, I told you. Right now, um, I would like some tightrope walking shoes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. steady. Ooh. Look, I'm balancing on a tightrope. Oh, it's high up here. <laughs> Can you balance on a tightrope with your special shoes? Whoa. <laughs> mm, now, I would like some. Slow moving shoes. Oh, right. oh. oh, oh it's yes. Slow. Walking as slow as a snail. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello Lorna. Hello, Tabra. Hello, Justin. Hello. Hello. Are you laughing? <laughs> Why? You said you were walking as slow as a snail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing, Tabra? Because snails don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But you see, when you say somebody's walking as slow as a snail, it means they're walking really, really slowly. <gasps> Have you seen a snail move? Have you? <laughs> How does a snail move, do you know? How does a snail move, do you know? It slips and it slides. From side to side Now we know, now we know Now I've got one. See if you can guess what this is. Tss, how does a snake move, do you know? Tss, how does a snake move, do you know? It slinks and it slides. From side to side. Now we know, now we know. Hmm, now what other creature? How does a duck move, do you know? How does a duck move, do you know? It flips and it flaps. Quack, quack. Now we know, now we know. I've got another one. See if you can guess what this is. How does a cat move, do you know? How does a cat move, do you know? It prowls, does a cat. It prowls just like that. Now we know, now we know. Oh, what about this one? Whoa! Oh. <laughs> How does a whale move, do you know? How does a whale move, do you know? It swims through the sea. <laughs> It's a great whale. <laughs> How does a tree move, do you know? How does a tree move, do you know? The wind makes it sway. This way. 
way and that way. <laughs> so, we know that a tree sways from side to side. <laughs> but did you know that something very special happens to a tree in the autumn? What happens, Lorna? Well, Tamba, the leaves tumble down, down, through the branches, down, down, until it hits the... <laughs> <laughs> it tickles, Lorna! <laughs> I like autumn. I like autumn too, but I also like springtime mm. when new lambs are born <laughs> and new flowers start to grow. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Well, I like the summertime when it's lovely and warm. Mm. Huh? Oh, and you can do lots of swimming. <laughs> so, that's spring, summer, and autumn. Now, what's missing? Hmm. Uh, winter! <laughs> that's when you have to wrap up to keep warm. But your nose is still cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll find out more about winter, spring, summer and autumn through the windows. How many windows? One, two, three. Round, square or arched? Which one will it be? It's the... Round window! It's the middle of winter. Everything's covered in a layer of snow. The fields and roofs are white. It's very cold. It's great fun playing in the snow, but you must wrap up warm before you go out. Animals wrap up too, growing thicker coats to brave the winter breeze. Winter is the coldest season of all, when the plants have died back and there are no leaves on the trees. Some animals, like hedgehogs, go to sleep for months while it's cold. It's called hibernation. Others, like blackbirds, stay awake but struggle to find enough food to eat. It's a good idea to pull out food for them, if you can. These pictures have been speeded up to show plants growing. It's springtime and life gets easier. Hedgehogs wake up and blackbirds find more to eat and start to build a nest. These pictures have been speeded up as well to show flowers opening in the spring when everything springs into life. Plants blossom and bud, the fields start to turn green and the days begin to get warmer and longer. It rains a lot to help everything grow. The hedgehog finds plenty to eat and starts preparing for a family. And so is this blackbird. By the time summer arrives, the leaves are on the trees, the flowers are blooming and the farmer's crops in the field have grown. The blackbird's eggs have hatched and mom is busy finding food for her chicks. The days are long and warm and both parents make many journeys to find food for their hungry chicks. The hedgehog babies have also been born and they're growing fast. Their prickly coats are getting spikier. The summer sun shines, although we often still have rain, which keeps the grass green and stops gardens from drying up. Slowly, the days start to get shorter and cooler and the sun throws long shadows over the ground. Autumn is here and the leaves fall off the trees. Everywhere things are slowing down and preparing for cold. The 
hedgehog looks for a last tasty meal before settling down to hibernate. The blackbird's feathers thicken and it puffs them out to keep the chilly wind out. Winter is on its way again. Can you imagine what it would be like to be a tree in the springtime? A springtime tree. It's springtime for a tree. Blossom comes and shoots will grow. New leaves, new life to let us know. It's springtime for a tree. Or maybe a summer tree. It's summertime for a tree. Summer tree dressed in leaves, gently sways in a summer breeze. It's summertime for a tree. Or what about an autumn tree? It's autumn time for a tree. Leaves change colour and tumble down and swirl around upon the ground. It's autumn time for a tree. Oh, now what about a winter tree? It's winter time for a tree. The empty tree stands tall and bold, blown by wind and snow that's cold. It's winter time for a tree. Ah, that was a lovely tree rhyme, wasn't it? Now, I thought we'd have a go today at making an autumn tree. So, we need a trunk and some branches. Well, I'm actually going to use my arm for the trunk and my fingers for the branches. And I'll show you how. I'm going to place my arm on the paper and then very slowly draw around my arm like this. <laughs> It tickles quite a bit, actually. You might need to get some help when you do this. It can be a bit tricky. That's it. All the way around the fingers without giggling too much. That's it. Nearly there. Just a little finger left. And then back down the arm to finish off our trunk. There. That looks good. Right, I'll turn that around. OK, now what are we going to start with? Well, let's start with the branches of a tree. Now, I've been outside in the park and I've collected some lovely leaves and twigs. So, let's use these twigs for our branches. If you just place them where your fingers are, like that. A few more. There we go. Whoops. And then... You can stick them down with some sticky tape. These ones here. And then those two at the end. There. That looks good. The trouble is, it looks like a winter tree at the moment with no leaves. So, we need leaves. Let's take some glue and just glue all around the edge like that. And then in between the branches as well. Lots of glue needed for this. Oh, I love gluing. Get all sticky. That's it. A bit more down here in between the branches and some up the top here as well. There. Right, that's enough glue. And now to use these beautiful autumn leaves. Look at the colours of these. Got lovely red and orange, yellow, brown. Now, we're going to stick the leaves down onto the tree like that. There. Now, I collected these from the park. Have you ever collected leaves and branches? Or maybe you may have kicked through the leaves in the autumn time. That's great fun, isn't it? There we go. I'm going to use all of these. A few more up the top. And then one more just there. There. That's looking good, isn't it? But I think it needs a few more leaves, don't you? Well, for the leaves, I'm going to use some paint this time. I've got a sponge and I've got some red and yellow paint. So if we just dip the sponge into the red, first of all, and then just dab in between the branches, like this. There we 
we go. Wow, this looks so colourful, doesn't it? That's it. And then, whoops, pop that back down there. Dab your sponge with the same side into the yellow. Lots of yellow. And then, if you watch, it makes a lovely orangey yellow colour. There we go. A little bit more yellow, I think. More at the top, some down the bottom. There we go. What about that? Well, we've got plenty of leaves on our tree, so now we need to colour the trunk in, don't we? Well, I've got a lovely brown colour for the trunk, so if we just use the sponge again, this time a different side, dab it into the brown paint, and then carefully, ooh, look at that, paint the trunk of the tree all the way up to the top, and then a little bit in between the branches. Whoop, got some on me there. There. A little bit more to finish it off. Wow! Ho ho ho! And there we have it. A beautiful tree in the autumn. Oh! That sounds like the Tickabilla clock. I wonder what time it is. Come on, let's go and have a look, shall we? Tickabilla, tockabilla, tickabilla, tock. What's the time on the tickabilla clock? Right, let's see. Well, the long hand is pointing down to the number six. So that means it's half past something. And the short hand is halfway past the number two. So that means it's half past two. But what's underneath the clock? Aha! It's lots of different fruits that you find on trees. Today's story is called Fruits and it's a Caribbean counting poem. Now I'm going to read this the way my mum used to read to me when I was a little girl. <sighs> Half a purple in the basket, only one a week can have it. Wonder which one that will be. I have a feeling that is me. One guinep up in the tree. Hanging down there, tempting me. It don't make no sense to pick it. One guinea can't feed a cricket. What's a guinea? Oh, it's a little sweet fruit, Tamba. Can you see it? It's hanging down ah. from the tree there. Two ripe guava upon the shelf. I know, I hide them there myself. When night come and it get dark, me and them We'll have a talk. They're on the shelf, they're look. Like they're hiding. Can you see them? Mm. Three sweet sup. Well, I just might give one of them a nice big bite. Cover up the bite just so, sis. Then no one will ever notice. Four red apple near me chair. Who so careless put them there? Them don't know how me love apple. Well, thank God for silly people. <laughs> I love apples oh, too. Me too, Tamba. Five jar plum. I can't believe it. How oh, they know jar plum, me favourite. But why they hide them in the cupboard? Cha! People can be so awkward. Six Nesbury. You want a nibble? Why baby must always dribble. Come, wipe your moat. It don't make sense to broadcast the evidence. What does that mean? Oh, she's saying that the baby must wipe her mouth because they don't want anyone to find out that they've been eating all the Nesbury fruit. <laughs> Seven mango. What a find. 
the smuddy who left them really kind. One for you and six for me. Six? If you want more, climb the tree. <laughs> <laughs> What's a smuddy? Oh, a smuddy is somebody. Ah, oh. somebody. Mm. Smuddy. Smuddy. <laughs> Eight orange for Cousin Glenn. But I have just one problem. How to get rid of the eight skin that the orange them come in? Nine jackfruit. Not even me can finish nine. But let me see. I don't suppose that they will miss one. That was hard. But now, me done. <laughs> Ten banana. Make them steer. I feeling really full today. Make me lie down on me bed quick. Lord, I feeling really sick. Too, Too much, much fruit. <laughs> there were lots of different fruits in that story, weren't there? There were, Tamba. Lots of different shapes and lots of different colours. Mm. There's someone having fun with shapes and colours through one of the windows. How many windows? One, two, three. Round, square or arched? Which one will it be? It's the square window. Julie is a balloon sculptor. What does a balloon sculptor do, Lorna? A, a balloon sculptor makes things out of balloons. They look like big green feet. <laughs> yes, they do a bit. Julie uses the air out of these bottles to work a special blowing up machine. She needs to make sure just the right amount of air goes into each balloon. When she presses this foot pedal, the machine pumps the correct amount of air into the balloon. Now she's put some legs on top of the feet. Now she's using a different colour of balloon. Yes, it's a kind of orangey colour. I wonder what that's going to be. Now she's putting on yellow balloons. She's tying them together really tight so they don't fall off. Wow! Look, it's bigger than Julie! What's that, Lorna? That's a kind of string called twine. What's she doing with the twine? She's tying it to the pole so that she can add some more balloons. she's going to make next. Look, she's tying on more yellow balloons. Maybe it's a person and she's going to put arms on it. <laughs> I think you are right, Tamba. I think she is putting some arms on it. What could these pink balloons be, Lorna? Well, they could be the cuffs on his sleeves. balloon could be its hand. <laughs> I think you're right again, Tamba. Look, this is a different kind of balloon. It's a face. It's a face. I was right. She's building a person. <laughs> Look, it's a clown's face. Put the clown's head on its body, Julie.
big green feet and long green legs, a yellow jacket with orange buttons, and a big smiley clown's face. <laughs> <laughs> I love clowns. They're always happy. Yeah. Well, you're happy most of the time, Tamba. I know for a fact when you tickle Tamba, <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> and Tamba loves kisses and cuddles. <laughs> and stories. Stories always make me happy. Oh, yeah. And what about a song? That makes me very happy. Are you happy when you sing a song? <laughs> How can people tell what we are feeling? How can they tell what mood we're in? All we have to do is start revealing our feelings. This is how we do it. Let's begin. <laughs> if I am happy, this is what I do. I jump up and down. <laughs> you do it too. Show that you're happy and jump along with me. We're happy for all to see. <laughs> we're happy. <laughs> yeah, we're happy. We're happy. You This is what I do. I stop around the house. You do it too. Show that you're grumpy. Stomp along with me. We're grumpy for all to see. We're grumpy. We're grumpy. We're grumpy. We're grumpy. We're grumpy. You and me. <laughs> if I am sad, <laughs> this is what I do. I cry and cry and cry. You do it too. <laughs> Show that you're sad and cry along with me. We're sad for all to see. <laughs> We're sad. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> We're sad. You and me. <laughs> not anymore. We're not. Oh, if I'm excited, this is what I do. I run and run and run. Singing a song? Yeah, or listening to a story. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Tickle, tickle, tickle.